it's fantastic to see the great turnout here tonight. I want to thank the Consul General, uh, Gupta, for inviting me to share a few words on India's 78th Independence Day. And it's, of course, the first Indian Day uh, hosted by the new Indian Consulate here in Seattle. It's an honor for me to join you for this big celebration. Seattle wouldn't be nearly what it is today without the incredible contributions of the Indian American diaspora. Nor would the entire technology industry, or Microsoft, or the Gates Foundation. It was back in the 1990s when I first visited India, uh, and Microsoft hired some incredible talent uh, from IIT and other great schools uh, to come help us here in the United States. And many of those were the people who went back to India to start our first Indian development center uh, in Hyderabad, but now we have development centers in many locations in India. Uh, in fact, over 20,000 uh, Microsoft employees doing amazing work there. Uh, the contributions from uh, all of these uh, employees has been absolutely incredible. Uh, of course, uh, highlighted that uh, it's been the third CEO of Microsoft, uh, Satya Nadella, who's doing such a, a fantastic job. Uh, I have the privilege of continuing to work with him on all these great AI frontiers, and it's, uh, it's exciting the time uh, for what we can do for the world, uh, including the United States and India, as it's ever been. Uh, also, of course, Satya is a cricket fan, uh, like a lot of the people here. Congratulations, India, on winning the uh, T20 Cricket World Cup. Of course, you know, India's impact goes uh, far beyond even uh, technology and cricket and Microsoft. Uh, India's progress as a country as the world's uh, largest democracy uh, are fantastic uh, for the entire world. And not only does Microsoft have its biggest offices outside the United States and India, uh, in my recent work uh, with the Gates Foundation, uh, India is also the country that we do the most work in. Uh, it's a country where the innovators are giving us incredible products, and we're seeing ways of improving health and reducing poverty uh, in a very rapid way, you know, which builds on the incredible uh, economic growth uh, that was mentioned. And so that innovation uh, is going to help the whole world, uh, particularly all the developing countries. A great example of that uh, is in the area of vaccines. You know, people may not know that the majority of all the world's vaccines are made in India. And those vaccines are both uh, not only low cost, but also uh, very, very innovative. If you go back just a generation, uh, only half of the babies in India were vaccinated against diseases like hepatitis, and the measles vaccine was not being used. Today, uh, India is vaccinating almost every child with all the latest vaccines, including those. 2024 is another great anniversary. It's the 10th year that uh, India's been polio-free, uh, and that was a, a great feat uh, that drives us uh, to finish the polio eradication. Polio there's only two countries left where we've never been able to eradicate it. In terms of health in India, the number of Indian children who die before their fifth birthday is less than one-third of what it was uh, just 20 years ago. And so those are just, you know, aspects of this incredible success story. Um, now the vaccines I mentioned that are made in India uh, are used in almost every country of the world. Uh, for example, BioE, uh, one of our partners there, along with Serum, began producing a new polio vaccine that will make a huge difference in finishing that 
uh, eradication. Uh, Indians also done some amazing uh, digital things. The vaccines, the Cohen uh, digital platform uh, was very key uh, for people registering during the COVID uh, epidemic. Uh, and that was a technology used by many other uh, countries. Um, the digital public infrastructure in India really is a model to the world. And in that case, I don't just mean uh, developing countries. In many ways, it's more advanced than in any other country. And there's been uh, the government, uh, the Prime Minister Modi's leadership, um, and people like Nandini and Tani, uh, along with other Indian innovators, have really built something that's a model for the world. It makes it easy to prove your identity, easy to get benefits, easy to access health care, easy to pay. Uh, it's really something. It's also being used to reduce gender inequality. Uh, we have, in a single decade, the percentage of Indian women with their own bank accounts has more than tripled. And so it's great to see that not only is Indian growing, but it's growing with an eye towards equality, gender equality, income equality, and that was articulated very well with India's presidency of the G20 uh, last year. Our foundation is very proud to support India in all of these things, including taking that people work and implementing it around the world. When I was in India earlier this year, uh, I went to Odisha, uh, that was my first time, and I got to see how digital systems are helping farmers there. They were tracking the weather changes, tracking crop diseases, and sending alerts and advice to farmers on their phones so that they could take immediate action. And that's reduced the um, crop loss uh, by pest attacks by over 90%. And with climate change, that will become even more important. And of course, we're just at the beginning of this AI revolution. And we're going to use that for education, we're going to use it for health, and India uh, will be a cru crucial partner leading that forward. Uh, the collaboration in the Indian government has brought and deep, uh, including the uh, great times I've had uh, spending time with the Prime Minister, uh, and all our, our partners over there. In the years ahead, we're committed to strengthen that partnership to drive progress towards a healthier, more equitable world. So let me conclude by saying happy Independence Day to all Indians, and thank you for welcoming me here today. Thank you.